Hey guys, how's it going? Today's video is going to be really fun. We had planned on filming outside in the greenhouse today, but it is snowing again and it's really kind of dark grayish outside. So it makes it really hard to film out there. So we decided to come inside and do something a little bit different. So I have a few packages that I haven't opened up yet that we just recently got in the last few days. So we thought we'd do kind of a mini mail time video. And then I got some new plants yesterday that I thought you might like to see. And then we're going to do a little mini Q and A. So I'll answer some of the most recent questions that have come in both on I'll probably look at YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. So let's get right into it. So the first thing I actually ordered already opened because, oh, well, you know. So a lady, her name is Linda from Linda and Her Lens. She wrote a really sweet, a really sweet card telling us how she's been following us and how she's enjoyed it and it's been inspiring to her. And so she went out and took a picture of one of her gorgeous arrangements, which is kind of glary, I know, I'm sorry. Oh, right there, that looks good. Next one. This one is from Perennially Yours, Carrie Ann Mendez. And if you guys haven't heard of her, she is, I actually met her, Erin and I met her in um, Ohio at Cultivate last year. And then we were able to catch up with her again at the Grand Garden Show on Mackinac Island. I'm excited to see her again. She is like so full of energy and life. And um, she speaks all over the country doing just all kinds of different gardening topics. So I'm really excited. Look at this, the right size flower garden. This is one of her books. So, okay, this is a list of when she's going to be speaking. You guys might like this. So she's doing some webinars and we will link uh, down in the description or comment section where you can get more information. So you don't even have to be like present to see her speak. You can join in on one of her webinars that she offers. Oh, we missed the first one. So the first one was on January 26th and it was inspired design lessons learned from magnificent gardens in England, Canada, and United States. You can still watch it though. They are available, we'll link it down below. You, they're available still to watch. So the next webinar I think is in April, but I'm not seeing it on this paper. So let me look it up on my phone really quick. Yep, it's on Thursday, April 27th. It's about jaw dropping flowering shrubs, the new no fuss glamour plants. And then as far as webinars go, I think there's another one July and October, but you can find out more information on her website as well as all the other things um, that she's doing. So I'm really looking forward to taking a look at this book. Thanks Carrie Ann for sending your book, super excited. Okay, so the next thing is actually something I opened uh, around Christmas time. So, and I'm wearing it right now. Can you see the shirt? Let me stand up so you can see. From Greenstock. So last year we did a video about the Greenstock Grow Tower and it's really a neat thing. I'm excited to clean it out this spring and plant it up. I think I'm gonna do flowers this year and make it like a colorful looking tower. The concept is really awesome. It's like different layer tier. Anyway, we'll link the, the video down below so you can learn more about it. But they also sent this cutting board. Isn't that so pretty? It says the harvest is plentiful down below. So anyway, it was in a box with this t-shirt and a whole bunch of candy. That was really good. Also, they just had a really successful Kickstarter and they reached their goal and that's so awesome. So thank you so much Green Sock for sending this stuff. I love it. Okay, and then I'm gonna skip to the plants before I open the big box because the plants are on top of the box. So I'm planning a project right now. That's the project actually we were going to film today. Um, so I'll show you the plants first. This is a Sedevaria Jet Beads. Isn't that the most gorgeous color? And then this one looks quite similar. This is a Alpenglow Vera Higgins Graptocetum. As far as the structure goes, this one looks pretty similar, but the color is a little bit lighter. And of course, I had to have a Lola Echeveria. This is a green Abalone Echeveria. It's a really pretty one. Graptivaria Tatubins, Tatubins, Tatubins. I don't know. I got two of these ones. These ones are really pretty. And a Graptopetalum Marquis de Savine. Savine. I like the dusty purple color of this one. It's really pretty. And then my last little guy is the Sedum Aurora. Okay, and then I got two bigger ones. I'm gonna set this box down. Christmas Carol Aloe with gorgeous color. I don't know if you guys can see like how bright pink the margins are on the foliage, but there's a whole bunch of little babies all the way around. So I can kind of pull this thing apart and use smaller pieces. So here's the other one. Looks like they just got done blooming. There's, I can see a couple bloom stalks sticking in there. Okay, and then the last box I'm gonna open is really big, like really big. So it's right down here below me. So I'm just gonna open it up and I'll show you everything that's in the box. And it says, it's from Braun Horticulture. So this excites me because I like a lot of the 
stuff, like a lot of the containers that Braun has. So, and I don't know what's in this box. Oh, so this is the first item. This is like a wood trough. So I think it would be great either to put succulents in it or air plants or anything. I mean, you could set this on your coffee table. It's really cute. We did an antique adobo planter, like, feels like it was a couple of years ago, maybe a year and a half ago, I don't know. Um, but it was in an antique wood, like a dough bowl that kind of had this shape. It was a little bit bigger, but I love low bowls like this. These are your crack up. Boot planters. Look at how cute. So there's a black one and they're metal. So metal planters. I don't know, there's no, it doesn't look like there's drainage. Oh, it's not watertight on the bottom. So water will make it out of there easy. And then this aqua colored one, which I think is really cute. And there's one more, a red one. Oh, oh my, these are so cute. Look at this, it's a bathtub planter. How cute is that? I really like the color, it's like a dusty greenish blue. I don't know what color you would call that. Rustic bathtubs. So we've got a larger size as well. And see, so they've got that. That is super cute. You could put this on any kind of outdoor table, line it with some moss and plant up. Oh, it would be cute with pansies. In fact, I have some violas in the other room. That these, This would be really cute, planted with violas. Got another stack of planters. Oh, these are adorable. What do they call these? These are metal garden basket. So the handles do move, although I kind of actually like to like them like that. So you can put the handles like this if you want. And they are lined. There's a little plastic liner and a large size. I really like the color of these, the cream, the kind of old looking, you know, chippy, chippy paint on the side there. Really cute. Look at these planters. These are, are these made out of wood? I think they are. They're lined, so you can plant them with stuff. But I really like the rustic look of these. A couple more of the long wood troughs, and I don't know if that's what they're called. But I will try to find links to this stuff um, so that if you guys wanna check out more information about it, you can. I know Braun is a wholesaler. They um, sale to di sale. They sell, <laughs> they sell to different retailers. And my parents, actually, their garden center, they've been carrying Braun products forever. So I've been using their stuff for a lot of years and I really like it. And I was familiar with their stuff. So um, this is really exciting. So there's a small one. And then this is the medium size one here. And I think you might be able to figure out on their website where like the closest retailer is to you, I think. Looks like there's three more things in this box. I am actually really impressed by their packing skills. This is, what do they call this? A bulb tray. And it looks like there's a couple more similar. So that one was creamish, creamish, whitish color. And these, oh, these are not bulb trays. So this is, a, this is the only bulb tray right here. Next ones are different, but they're kind of the same shape. They just call these a vintage uh, metal tray set. I love that. I think this one, might be my favorite out of the whole box. All right, and then there is one more size, a larger size of the same. I love the colors of this one. This one looks like, I don't know, like it's been in a potting shed for a lot of years, but it doesn't look, some things look like, you know, you want, I don't know, they were manufactured like that, but this one looks like it could pass as actually being aged. I really like that. Thank you, Bron, so much for sending all of this stuff. I'm so excited to use it. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a few questions from some of my most recent posts. I'll start with Instagram. Um, let's see, yesterday I posted a picture of a view out of our kitchen window from last May, so it looked all pretty and green because I'm just so sick of looking at snow. Uh, and a couple of people asked what the purple flower was that is spilling over the edge, and that is a birch hybrid campanula. And Maria, Carol, Cri Carol asked, after cutting in this way, what will you do with them? I have some that long as well and don't know exactly how I should cut to use them. Any help? 
And typically what I do with succulents, I usually don't leave those long, long stems. I just took the picture like that. Right after I was done, I cut the stems off to where there were still a few nodes exposed. So where the leaf meets the stem, that is a node. And that's where new roots are typically, that's where they typically form either from there or from sometimes the end of the stem. Um, so I make sure to clean off the leaves and leave a couple nodes exposed. And then I let them dry for a few days. So I'll let them sit in a tray. They're still sitting in the tray right now drying so that all the ends that I cut are will callus over and dry so that we don't deal with rot problems. And then I just nestle them down into fresh cactus soil and keep them fairly moist. I mean, I probably I check them twice a week um, and lightly water with a syringe just so I can control how much water goes in there. And then they'll start forming new roots and take off. So it really depends on how you want to use them. You can leave a longer stem if you want. It will produce roots along that stem and be just fine, or you can cut them up pretty close to the bottom of the rosette. All right, so the next question is on the bowl of cactus picture that I posted. Um, and somebody, let's see, Love All Marilyn asked, okay, so what kind of gloves do you use when planting cactus? Because I have yet to find the perfect cactus gloves. I don't have a super great answer for this one because I usually just wear my Atlas Nitro gloves for most everything or no gloves at all. If I'm dealing with a super spiny cactus or the kinds that like they'll leave hundreds of little spines in your hand or whatever they touch, I'll use a dish towel and I'll roll it up so it's kind of like a nice skinny long tube and I'll just wrap it around the cactus. So that way I can just hold on to the tails, like the ends of the towel, and then I can lift the cactus up all over without ever even touching the, the cactus at all. And then I'll use either my fingers carefully or like the end of a Sharpie marker works really well to tamp the soil in around the root ball of the cactus and that way I don't ever have to touch it. Um, a lot of cactus I will just use bare hands or my gloves because a lot of them are, they're not as prickly as you think if you go slow and you weight distribute right, I guess. I don't know. I think you just get more used to it the more you plant them. So. The towel trick works wonders. You can also use newspaper for that, like a long piece of newspaper if your cactus is bigger. All right, now I'm moving on to YouTube and I'm just gonna pick a few questions that have been asked the most recently here. Um, somebody asked about our laundry basket turned strawberry planter and we actually just reshared that video this morning. It seemed like, I don't know if it's because people have spring fever or they're just looking for new projects they wanna try this spring, but it seems like there's been a little bit more interest in that video. It's funny, we'll see like, um, certain videos just become more popular at different times. It's weird. Sheila Cushenberry asked, how well did the plastic hold up to the outside elements? I live in Texas and plastic tends to become brittle quickly when left outside. So my laundry basket did really well. It still stands and still actually planted. I have it in our greenhouse. So we moved it in um, like late fall or so and I cut back the, it was actually a banana. I was telling everybody it was a dwarf canna because that's what the tag said and I should know better you know, being a person who gardens by looking at the leaves, but I didn't, it didn't even clock in on my radar. And then somebody uh, commented and said, I think that's a banana, not a canna. And that's why it got so big because I was wondering why in the world the plant got so enormous. Anyway, plastic is holding up really well. It looks like it's gonna survive another season. I don't know if maybe um, not having it out in super direct sun or if in your area in Texas would make it difference or not. I'm not sure, but so far so good with mine. Oh, and then on another old video, the antique dobo, which I talked about earlier, uh, Diane Buntrock asked, how do you water this, the cactus with all the other plants? So I water my cactus and succulents almost identically. I, I know that some people water cactus a little bit less often, but I've never seen mine do poorly with the way I water, so I've just kept on going with it. So I check my uh, succulents and cactus right now in, while they're inside about every seven to 14 days. So I'll check on them every single week. Some of them need water a little bit more often. Um, like right now the aeoniums are growing, so I'm giving them a little bit more water. Um, cactus will probably keep on an every two week schedule. I think the difference between how often I water and maybe how often other people water is I don't give my plants a ton of water. Um, I don't like give them a deluge. I just give them enough to moisten their root ball enough to get them by until the next time um, and that's it. So I don't usually have a bunch of water collecting in the saucers, like hardly ever. So that could be the difference. If you're really soaking your cactus super well, you could probably get away with longer periods of time in between. As far as the antique doble went, uh, that was actually a custom piece I made for a gal that lives in our area and it did really well apparently throughout the season. So success. On the orchid pot bird feeder that we did, Sandra asked, uh, did you use the same drill bit for the bird as you did for the saucers? Yes, I used an eighth inch glass and tile bit 
for the saucers to drill the little holes and then also I put the decorative bird on the top and I drilled holes with the same bit. I also mentioned in our most recent garden tour, so that was kind of a funny video to film because when you're doing a garden tour and there's three feet of snow plus on the ground outside, it feels kind of awkward. <laughs> Um, but we wanted to do a monthly garden tour every single month through this whole year so you guys and us so we have kind of like a record of what everything looks like but so that you guys can see how everything looks um, grow you know growing and filling in and all the changes we make and I think it'll be kind of a fun way to chronicle all that stuff uh, so a lot of you guys were messaging and um, commenting about the vegetable garden area. And yes, I am putting in a vegetable garden. I'm super excited for it. In fact, we'll probably be doing a video in the next week or two about how I'm planning my vegetable garden because I've started to, it's all gridded out and I'm trying to make some decisions on what I want to plant where and all that stuff. So we'll do a video kind of on how I'm doing that and what my plans are. I can't really do it exactly until all the snow's gone because I can't measure anything. So everything's a little bit has to be flexible right now but I'm really excited and I hope that you guys are too all right you guys I think that's it I hope you enjoyed seeing all the new stuff and all the plants and then hearing some answers to some questions and I hope that you are all enjoying your February I hope that spring comes soon we'll see you in the next video bye